All right, I'm going to do the brakes on this 2015 Buick LaCrosse. Now, this one's the 2.4, so the brakes on the their V6 model might be a little different, but it's, you know, they might be a little slightly bigger pads or rotor or something like that, but it should be the same process. But uh, just so that it's stated, this is the 2.4 model. Before you take the weight off the wheel, go ahead and loosen your lug nuts. All right, once you have the car up securely on the jack stand, take your wheel off. And then you're going to have two mounting bolts for the caliper. All right, guys, I'm going to talk a little fast here because i got a lot of information to cover here real quick uh, before we move on any further. So um, I could not find, uh, I was, I, I looked up online trying to find torque specs for this. I couldn't find torque specs for it. Uh, but what I found was uh, more than one claim that these were torque to yield bolts, which means, uh, long story short, if you take them out, they need replaced because they stretch uh and you're supposed to replace them or they might not hold like they did originally. Um, that worried me slightly because I found a couple posts claiming that they were torque to yield bolts. I called my local Chevy dealer and asked, uh, I called the parts department first to see if they were torque to yield. Uh, they looked them up in their system, but they said, sorry, uh, we don't know. Our system doesn't tell us if it's torque to yield or not. So he said, well, let me ask our mechanics real quick and see if they replace them when they work on these cars so he gets back on the phone a few minutes later says yeah our guy says that he just takes them off with the impact gun and puts them back on with the impact gun so that must mean they're not torqued to yield so you should be good to go wow that's yeah well first of all they're not even torquing them if they're just ripping them off and throwing them back on with the impact gun but hey what else is new this is why i work on my own cars instead of paying someone to do it wrong so anyways, guys, I'm sorry I couldn't find the torque specs for these, and I also do not know if they're torque to yield bolts or not. So with that being said, if you're just replacing the pads, you can take just the caliper here off, it'll slide off, and then you take this outside piece here of the uh, bracket. I'm not sure if I'm calling it the right thing, but take this outer piece off with the uh, sliding pins inside of it, and by taking the two bolts on the other side here off, and uh, you can get your pads out, and then, you know, re uh, insulation or uh, reverse of removal. Uh, most people will lube those little rods up uh, before they put it back together to make sure they keep working correctly. The torque spec on those bolts I were able to find when you put that outer piece back on. It's uh, like one source said 25 foot-pounds, the other said 27 foot-pounds, so either one of those is going to work just fine for you. Uh, but if you end up having to take the whole freaking thing off like I do in the video because you're going to have to do that if you take the rotor off, if you're replacing the rotor, um, I could not find torque specs on that. Haynes doesn't make a manual for this car yet because it's too new. And my local Chevy dealership, well, yeah, even they're obviously not doing it properly, so they couldn't even give me a proper answer. So uh, maybe you guys are better, better at Google than me and you can actually find a torque spec. If you can, great. If you find out that they're torqued to yield bolts, any of that, any information is appreciated. If you can leave it down in the comments for other people or educate me. Uh, what I ended up doing, and I'm not at all recommending you do this, I'm 100% recommending you find out whether they're torqued to yield bolts, whether they need replaced, and what the torque spec is. Uh, but what I ended up doing was just snugging them down nice and tight. I would say approximately anywhere between 50 and 70 foot pounds of torque. You don't want to over torque these. You don't want to over tighten them because that is an aluminum control arm slash knuckle, whatever you want to call it. So uh, the aluminum will s strip out a lot easier. So you don't want to you don't want to hulk these things in there, but you, nice and snug. And uh, it's common practice again, not recommended at all, but it's common practice if somebody is putting a bolt back in that they think may be a torque to yield bolt. Uh, I've heard many times where people will put blue Loctite on it to uh make sure that the bolt doesn't rattle loose so there's that too but uh do as i say not as i do that's what i did i just snugged them down real good and tight i'm sure they'll be fine but this is not the way you're supposed to do it so you like i said uh, i this is the first time i've never been able to find a torque spec for you guys so i i, I don't know hopefully you guys can find it if you do leave it in the comments for me Maybe uh, your local Chevy dealership or Buick de dealership will be more professional than mine and will actually be able to help you out. I don't know, but uh, it is what it is. So 
really we need to find out if these are torque to yield bolts and if they need replaced and whether they are or not um uh, well the the torquing them down is way 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 more important if they're torqued to yield because you need to replace them and torque them properly so that they do their job if they're not torqued to yield then usually you can get away with just uh snugging them up real nice and tight but it is what it is sorry i couldn't be more help all right so there's your mounting bolt top and bottom are the same and it is a 13 16 all right before you go and pry this off you want to have something set up that you can set it on you do not want to hang it from this brake hose here where you can uh, kink it and cause it to collapse internally and then you'll be having to replace your brake hose your brake line so make sure you have something to set this on so it's not dangling by the brake hose should be able to pry it back with a screwdriver like that just wiggle back and forth top and bottom till you get it off all right so we're just doing pads that's all we need you can see we're about out there on the back to get the rotor off you're gonna have to take that little bolt out on the bottom there it's a t30 torx fit you take that out and then you might have to give the rotor a few whacks with a hammer to break it free so before you pop these out take good note of how they go in there even take a picture if you want that way you don't forget sometimes it can be confusing putting new pads back in try to figure out how they go in if you just hurry up and rip them out so make sure you know how they go in and out before you pull these out let's see and I'm probably gonna have to use two hands on this but I'll just push out this one came out pretty easy this one's sticking a little more and just gonna have to stick a screwdriver on the back side top and bottom to tap it out a screwdriver and a hammer all right there's with the pads out these are your little retaining clips your pads may or may not come with the new ones so you got to get the pad up in there uh, a lot of times this is somewhat problematic you might have to you got to push them back like that and bend them out and such to get that pad wiggled in there all right now to get the new pads to fit over the rotor because they're going to be thicker obviously you got to push this piston in to get clearance which i always forget not to remove the old pad first so you can use that to push this piston in with the big ass c clamp so i might have to pop that pad back in there so we can push this piston in all the way so you want to see brake fluid yep you want to remove your brake fluid reservoir cap here so when you push the piston in uh, there's no resistance it'll let the pressure come out easily so you're not fighting that piston just don't forget to put it back on when you're done okay so you get your c-clamp on it like that against the old pad and then you're just gonna slowly turn it push that piston back in just push it in until it stops you shouldn't have very much resistance as you can see I'm doing this pretty easily one-handed while recording so if you have a lot of resistance after you've taken your brake fluid cap off then you have a failing caliper and you probably want to replace it most likely culprit sometimes it can be a failing line but generally speaking the calipers will fail before the line does so you just turn it till it stops it's stopped then you gotta get that pad out of there then you can put the new ones in Okay, again, this is going to be difficult to do one-handed and record, so I'm probably going to have to put down the phone here, but there's your wear indicator. You always want to put the wear indicator on the back yes, with a single piston unit like this because, as you can see on this, the back wears out faster because that's where all the pressure comes from. So make sure the pad with the wear indicator goes on the back. You got one for each side. All right, so there's with the new pads. Um, you wanna try to leave these clips in here if you can, but I have in the past where I could not get it in because it didn't clear, I've pulled those out, but if if you can, you wanna leave those in there so your pad doesn't rattle around and so it fits nice and snug. So uh, Also, don't touch the surface of the pad with shit on your fingers. Same goes for the rotor. You don't wanna get any dirt and shit on there. So there's installed, and now we can pop this thing back on here. 
All right, so in, in this instance, I have plenty of room. There's a huge gap between pad and rotor right now. So I had no problem getting this over the rotor. But sometimes you'll have a tighter fit, so you might have to shove it over a little bit. But this one went on super easy. Also, because of this gap here, you got to get these pads back in contact with the rotor. You don't want to just jump back in the car and go because when you go to hit your brake pedal for the first time, it's going to go to the floor because it has this space to clear. So we need to get back in and uh, push on the brake pedal uh, lightly a few times. And I'll go over that in a second. That way we get these pads back in contact with the rotor first. Also, if you don't have clearance and can't get it over the rotor either, you don't have your pads pushed back all the way or your piston's not back all the way. So you might have to go back through it and double check everything. All right, we're all torqued down. I'm going to throw this wheel back on. All right, so when you put your wheel back down, you want to tighten this back down in a crisscross pattern. You never want to go from one bolt to the next right next to it you want to go in a star crisscross pattern so like here 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 and you want to do this in three steps you want to talk, torque it to about 90 to 100 foot pounds of torque now you want to do three steps so the wheel doesn't go on cockeyed if you just go full tight full tight full tight full tight i'm done and then you could end up getting the wheel on there crooked so you want to go in three steps you want to do about 30 foot pounds of torque on your first set then uh, about 60 foot pounds and then 90 or 100 for your your uh, final step that ensures that the wheel goes on straight which actually has an effect on the uh, rotor and that's actually how you get warped rotor symptom and you can't it, it's because it's uh mounted crooked it'll cause the uh, rotor to wobble inside of the caliper and that's actually how you get warped rotor symptoms so that's why you want to uh, torque your wheel down in three stages in a crisscross pattern like that all right, we got both sides done now. Make sure you put your cap back on. Okay. All right. So here's what I was saying. Now, first of all, to start this car, this is new on me, but you have to push the brake down to push the start button. So make sure you press it very lightly, just enough to start it. It's going to feel really soft. Okay. So then what we need to do to get these pads back in contact with the rotor, just a little bit like that over and over until it starts to firm up slowly. The reason you don't want to do it fast or push it all the way down is because some cars have a little shutoff valve to where if a brake line blows, it, uh, it'll cut off whichever line is busted. That way you still have braking power. So if you go and push this down all the way to the freaking floor or push it too fast, you might trick your system into thinking you blew a brake line. So that's why you want to do this slowly. There we go. It's firmed up now. So now we have a normal brake pedal and it's good to go. Hey, thanks for watching. Make sure you hit that thumbs up button for me. Leave me a comment if you want. And uh, subscription is always appreciated. Thanks for watching.